Hello guys, here we have question number 13 from second understanding exercise of the chapter Ray and Wave Optics. So yeah, let's look at the question first. A thin plane of convex lens is partially immersed in water with its curved side up. Thickness of the lens in the middle is edge. Aperture of the lens is horizontal as shown in the figure. Refractive index of the water is mu, mu naught. If there is no reflection at any surface and no absorption in any medium, we obtain two equally bright images at depth D and capital D where capital D is greater than small d. Find the expressions for the radius of curvature of the curved surface, refractive index mu of the material, and uh, de depth h of the length, lens immersed in the water. So if you want to try it again, try it yourself without the hint, uh, you can do it now. So yeah, now let's look at the hint. First draw a ray diagram, try understanding how will the two images form and use proper approximations and calculations. So yeah, if you want to try it again with the hint, uh, you can do it now. So yeah, now let's look at the solution. So first of all, as I said, we'll try to visualize through a ray diagram what is happening over here. So first, uh, let's consider the rays which directly come into contact with the lens rather than the water. So here, uh, first refraction uh, occurs at the air lens interface and second occurs at the lens water interface. And after the first refraction, I've assumed that the image forms at G and after the second refraction, it occurs at J. Uh, it forms at J. So that's what's written here. As shown in the diagram, two refractions will occur. First at air lens interface and second at lens water interface. And here in the ray diagram, I've assumed the refractive index of the water to be more than the lens. Uh, although it won't really matter in the final answer. So uh, that's, oh, that's how the first image will be formed. And now let's consider th how the second image will form. Now let's consider the rays which come into contact with the water first and then with the lens. So now here, as shown in the diagram, three refractions will occur, first at M, then at K, and then at P, which are first at uh, water-air interface, then at water-lens interface, and then at lens-water interface. And uh, that's what's written here again. And uh, here I've said that at the first reflection, there is refraction there is normal incidence so it doesn't really need any calculations that it will pass undeviated at uh, the first refraction so now uh, let's look at the calculations this is how the two images will be formed so now let's look at the calculations involved in the formation of image one here i assume that the after the first refraction the image will form at the point g which is at a distance of v from the pole of the lens and uh, its distance from the uh, lower surface of the lens, which is uh, marked by red, uh, will be V minus H, and I've assumed, and it's it was it was given in the question that uh, the final image forms at a depth small d from the surface of the water, so uh, the distance of uh, that image from the lower surface of the lens will be d minus H, so that's how the first image will be formed. Now substituting the values in the equations formulas for uh, what we get is for the first refraction mu two by V minus mu one by U equals to mu two minus mu one over R. And this is the common uh, law of refraction for a curved surface with refract uh, with a radius of curvature r. So from here, the first uh, surface was uh, first interface was uh, air water inter air lens interface. So the mu is uh, the uh, refractive index of the lens. One is the refractive index of the air, and here uh, here is a typo. Here it should be mu, and mu minus one over r. And finally, what we get is the value of v to be mu by mu minus one times r. So, uh, and now considering the refraction at the second surface, uh, here we can directly use the formula of real depth over apparent depth, which will be uh, the ratio of the refractive indexes of the two media uh, in which it is being formed. So from here, we get what we get is mu by mu naught, mu naught by mu equals to d minus h over v minus h. Here I've shown uh, d minus h and v minus h, these form as these two lengths. So from here, what we get is, mu naught by mu equals to d minus h by mu minus mu by mu minus 1 times r minus h. So this is the first equation we get in this question. So now let's consider the image formation for the second case. So similarly here I assume that uh, after the second refraction image forms at uh, depth v and mind uh, mind you here uh, I've said second refraction because that the first refraction uh, I've ignored the first refraction because it was only normal incidence on the water so it can be ignored. So after the second refraction I assumed it to form at a depth v and uh, then its distance from the lower surface of the lens will be v minus h and uh, uh, as it is given that it, the final image will form at a depth d. So the distance of that, that image from the lower surface of the lens will be d minus h. 
so from here again doing the similar calculations as in part one what we can what we can get is mu two by v minus mu one by u equals to mu two minus mu one over r so mu by v minus mu naught by u equals to mu minus mu naught over r here again there is a typo here it should be mu so from here what we get is mu by v equals to mu minus mu naught over r and finally v equals to mu by mu minus mu naught times r so now again uh, considering the refraction at third surface third interface uh, again using the formula of real depth or apparent depth we get the second equation to be mu naught by mu equals to capital D minus small h over mu by mu minus mu naught times r minus h so uh, now we have gotten two equations but uh, we, we can observe here that we have got three variables which are mu h and r so but we have only got uh, two equations so we have to get a third equation somehow that's what i've written here so now uh, again if we look co closely at the question we can see that it has been said that both the images are equally bright which implies that the amount of light compared here by the surface area of incident light used in the two images separately which goes in both is the same so now uh, as it was said in the question here that two equally bright images at depth uh, small d and capital D so using this fact uh, what we can get uh, here is that we uh, again I've assumed the lens uh, and here I've considered it in the horizontal frame because it will be much easier to show in the diagrams and uh, here the light forming images two are in these two regions and the light forming the image one is uh, uh, in this region and these are circular regions I have showed in, in 2D so they, uh, you um, hope you can visualize that so and I assumed the radii of these two regions to be R2 and R1 and uh, I assume the angle, these angles to be theta 1 and this angle to be theta 2 as shown in the diagram. So now uh, the equations we can get from here is first of all r times 1 minus cos theta 1 which is uh, r is this length times 1 minus cos theta 1 is this length gives us this length which is the thickness of the lens which is given by capital H. So from here what we get is r times 1 minus cos theta 1 equals to capital H and as here we are considering paraxial approximation which means that the incident rays are very close to the principal axis of the lens. So from here uh, cos theta 1, theta 1 should be z uh, very close to 0. So cos theta 1 can be approximated to 1 minus theta 1 square by 2. So finally what we get is r theta 1 square by 2 is approximately equals to h. And similarly we can get for uh, angle t uh, theta 2 which is r times 1 minus cos theta 2 equals to r theta 2 squared by 2 equals to capital H minus small h and uh, similarly r sine theta 1 equals to r theta 1 as the angle is very small and this will be equals to r1 and r theta 2 equals to r2 <coughs> now as the uh, as we know that the areas of these two regions are same so pi times r r1 square minus r2 square equals to pi times r2 squared so now simplifying what we get is r1 square equals to 2 r2 squared and substituting the value of r1 and r2 to be r theta 1 and r theta 2 respectively we get the va that r square theta 1 square equal to 2 r square theta 2 square and cancelling 1 r from each side we get that r theta 1 square equals to 2 r uh, theta 2 squared and r theta substituting r theta 1 squared and r theta 2 squared from the above we get 2 h capital H equals to 4 times capital H minus small h so from here what we get is small h equals to capital H by 2. So this is the third equation we got and now substituting this third equation into 1 and 2 and eliminating r which is the one of the three variables we needed to find we get a quadratic in mu as shown in the as shown below. So we get mu square times d minus d equals to mu times d minus d mu naught plus h times mu naught minus 1 by 2 plus h times 1 minus mu naught. Now here we have to observe that uh, the thickness of the lens which is the h is very very less than the uh, distances involved in the image formations. So we can actually neglect this in comparison to these two. So from here uh, on uh, approximating that what we get is mu square times uh, d minus d equals to mu times d minus capital D mu naught plus h times 1 minus mu naught equals to 0. Now using quadratic formula here we get mu equals to d mu naught minus d plus or minus root of d mu naught minus d whole square minus 4 times d minus d times h times 1 minus mu naught over 2 times d minus d. Now here uh, we can uh, take this value common uh, so that uh, we can uh, manipulate the results easily. So what we get from here uh, and now we have to observe that here the second term which is this term uh, this is greater than uh, d mu naught minus d because 
this term will be ob always be positive so from here this negative root can be eliminated so we have to consider only po positive root here and the the second thing which we have to observe here is that the second term in the square root this term it again has a factor of h so uh, this reduces its value uh, in very uh, in a very large extent compared compared to 1 so this can be approximated to th this value so from here uh, we get the final value of mu to be d mu naught minus d over capital d minus small d and uh, so this is the final value of mu and substituting uh, this value of mu in equation 1 or 2 uh, back we can get the value of r to be d d times mu naught minus 1 by mu naught times d minus d so yeah that's the final answer and yeah i know this question was very lengthy and very manipulative so you have to uh, have an idea of what approximations do we have to do in this physical processes otherwise you will you won't be able to solve it uh, very quickly because the uh, calculations w would just go to be very hectic so uh, that's the final answer hope you all like the video uh, please subscribe and like if you love this content so uh, thank you for watching